just trying to make sure. Can you just check if everything is being made to be honest with you? see is the registry's copy of this with a date stamp as to when it was filed. Yeah, That's yeah, what I'm wanting yeah, because okay. that will, to me, satisfy when anything was yeah. done. Well, um, you can always make an application. Have you seen that? You might just told to yes. give me yes. push. Yes. Push. I have Because I, I only got this in January, so yeah. you probably got it from me. Yeah. I have seen it. Yeah. This is what Mike was referring to in uh, yeah. page 35 of the transcript. Yeah. Um, I hadn't seen it before then. No. And this is what he's saying was produced. It doesn't show what was actually supplied. No. It's, um, you know what I mean by the disclosure index. Yes, thing. Yes, so, I mean, that would have been handy to have. And the witness list, um, was he not supposed to have supplied that to me well before yeah, November? Yeah, witness list. Yeah. In this instance, it's only one witness, but you still should get the name and it should be a public. So, how come he had to create it after November the 7th? Yeah. an answer to my notice or application to record the proceedings first and foremost, obviously. Have you, would you like a copy of it here? I, I've sent it to the registry probably a month ago. That's the original copy. I require that. But I require that back. Have you seen that? No, I've just seen it. Thank you. I do understand it was provided to our office of banking. Oh, it's good. It simply, ten days ago. Yes, completely. Uh, um, I would be opposed to the application. My understanding is that um, the proceedings are recorded by the regular witness in the court, and those all matters are transcribed and available after the hearing. I um, also want to say that the exemption that's available is the media. Um, those parties can have an application to the court, which is discretionary power only. And there are various um, regulations which cover and guideline in relation to media reporting of court proceedings. So my assumption is that I'm available to the court for the defendant to so uh, for the to seek this application and there's an obstruction of your honour. Um, so, I would object to that, your honour. No, that's just waiting for the 
November for that transcript I received on the 8th of January, two months on. Um, it wasn't until I reviewed the transcript that I noticed there were some documents mentioned too, which I never got in the disclosure by the 14th of November, a report here, um, and it was only at the mid-January that I got that. So. Sure. Okay. In regards to the recording, um, the Bill of Rights 1990 section 14 clearly any person has the freedom and right to receive and part and seek uh, information and opinions of any kind in any form. And I have checked with the registry, this has been going on since June last year, asking for them to provide some rule or regulation which states I do not have the right to exercise in this public courtroom. They've told me it's a public private courtroom, they've sent me media stuff as a, well oh man I have that right, I don't have to be a member of the media to want to seek and receive as a part of the proceedings. I believe I have a right to keep an independent and impartial record. And also, given that it's in regards to $80 million worth of revenue collection, it's also a matter of public interest. I hold a YouTube clip, a YouTube channel, where I've been following speed cameras now for almost five years, and the process is behind it, and all of the guff that goes on. So, in that regard, there is some large public interest in there as well. Um, but it, it, as far as the transcripts was concerned, um, the previous transcripts I have received have been incomplete, missing words. To me, a video recorder, even if it's an audio recording, will capture things far more better than any transcript would. Um, I also asked the registry for a copy of the recording, video or audio, from this courtroom on the 7th of November. They told me none exists and was unable to supply me any. So. The practice just uh, stated that it is audio recorded, so there's a little conflict going on there because the registry's telling me there is no audio or video recording. And well, yeah, if I can tell you that the, what appears in this court is, um, is recorded, it is not transcribed as we are talking, it is transcribed later if the judge approves the request. You asked for the um, proceedings to a transcript of the proceedings. They were transcribed. I checked, I had a, a brief look at the transcript when I had time to be able to do so. Mm -hmm. um, I then asked my associate, my PA, to go through the transcript and listen to the recording and she amended the recording. I think I explained, I think when, the, when it was released to you, it said uh, the reason why there was a delay because it had taken some time no for, explanation. for the transcript to, to have been corrected. I was given so, no explanation. Well, you, I'm sorry, you should have been, but it was because, um, as I said, I wanted the recording to be as accurate as possible. I appreciate and that. you got the, the best, you got an accurate copy of what the was. So, um, if you make that request again, from what well, you're making that request, in regards to any, for any recording that is made, uh, audio recording, audio, there is no visual recording. Oh, I thought that was a camera sitting up there. I'm sorry, up in the top corner there. Is that not a camera? Well, there should not be. Oh. Oh, but that's not a camera up there. Yeah, oh, isn't it? Okay, sorry. So, uh, the normal. In most courts, there is no camera. There have been cameras in some of the courts, but they are not, they do not they're not operational. So there is no visual recording. Okay, thank you, Karina. I am. Um
you may have a blog, you can obviously write on the, on the blog, um, but there is a formal record, as I said, you'll be able to have a copy of that, again, once it has been transcribed, and once I have asked my associate to check through the transcript. If you are concerned that there is an error, then you can write back into the registry oh, okay. and say you're concerned and I would take the time to check the recording. Because oh, okay. everything is recorded. Sure, I'll ask sure. the registrar to make sure. Can you just check if everything is being recorded? Sure. Empty hours will occur. Cool. Right? Okay, thank you. Um, so there's no application again. Uh, no, it's just the application in regards to recording for today's matter. Um, I think the rest are just two motions for dismissal and a motion for costs. Did I supply? Have you received those? Well, they were received on the January, sorry, I haven't, I haven't read them. It's a 20 page motion for, motion for dismissal and a 3 page motion for costs. Well, I don't think we can deal with either of these at the moment because you're not successful defending yet. Oh, sure. And in relation to the no facts and evidence that have been supplied, I haven't heard the text. Fair enough. I haven't heard the text. I'm just going to what's been supplied to me and reviewing that. You said something about a document that was not supplied. Uh, yeah, um, you made the Section 30 order last time we were here, and I said it's in November, um, which I did receive. Um, a lot of stuff that I already did have, plus some documents that I didn't have, um, including a, um, what looked like one that had just been created, a witness list that had been created post November the 7th, which had been told I'd already received beforehand. Um, so that was a bit of inconsistency. Um, and there was this report here from Inspector Kelly Ryan. Now, I didn't realise this report existed. I was reading the transcript after the 8th of January, and I noticed in page 35 in the lowest, last paragraph he refers to this report. I then contacted Mike McMurtry and asked him for a copy of it, which he supplied to me. Um, he's stated that this report itself doesn't show any proof of service that I got these documents, just what that Kelly Ryan produced at the time. Um, I maintain that all I ever re received from the 30th of May, from the initial disclosure, was a photograph and a summons, along with my own documentation back. Um, no, it just it just seems to me that that's still more that's been disclosed after the time I supposed to have it disclosed too. And secondly, the uh, I still received no evidence or license status. There's no New Zealand transport form stating anywhere that there are current licenses exists or isn't it? That it's, there's records of the of the vehicle, but there's nothing what to do with the driver's license or anything in the file. So, that's it. well, surely you must have proof of a driver's license for the driver's license plane transport to apply, and it, would it not be for the you're plaintiff? Not charged, you're not charged with driving without a license, sir. Is that not proof of authorisation? Is a speed. Is that not proof? that there's authorisation for them to issue that ticket in the first place? Would you not have to have a driver's licence to be issued a speeding ticket? So you can be issued a speeding ticket without having a driver's licence? Yes. Oh. But you're driving, people, many people drive, I'm sure, they drive without a licence and they... I was under the impression that um, the land transport rules only apply to someone well, who's asked for that privilege. <laughs> so anybody who says that they can drive on the road... I'm suggesting everybody has the right to travel freely up, um, along the common way, accessing the common way, and that's completely different from driving a motor vehicle for, for um, commercial use. You, you're restraining a right for a privilege. Right, well, I don't, I don't think we need to get into that. Well, you were just asking me why. Right? Oh, no, 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 no. so. um, you also asked for me to um, produce the Section 30 order itself. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you about. Yeah, yeah. Um, you said the email copies supporting the production of the letters that I sent. Um, I didn't have them with me last time. I have the email, uh, the verification for acknowledgements on those dates that I stated. Plus, um, there's also copies with the attached correspondence. I would point out on the bottom of each correspondence to the New Zealand Police, there's a note of failure to respond. No response to me. They've acquiesced. Yes. So, would you like to? Yes, thank you. Yes, that's that's Mr. Chambers. Have you seen me? You were all of that. All of this was emailed to everybody about a week after our last hearing, so it's all on record. If they haven't seen them by now, that's 
really. Sorry, so the copies of these were sent to... Copies of... Well, if that was sent to Mike McMurtry, okay. yep. I, I, I would point out the, the email that I initially sent to, that I was getting the automatic acknowledgements from, um, mm -hmm. the one initially noted on the cover note from the New Zealand Police Infringement Bureau, um, no longer gives you an acknowledgement date that you've sent them something. That's changed. Every other time I've sent them, I get an order, and that's a good way of keeping track of what I've sent, but for some reason they've stopped that now. Your Honour, if I could just add one other thing. In all of that correspondence, you'll take note that there is nowhere that I'm asking for a photograph. The reason being is I already had that supplied. The witness list there states photographs too on the one that Mike created after the 7th of November. Yeah, the, the one that says for the hearing of 9th of 2018 at the bottom, the witness lists and exhibits, it states photographs in plural. There's only ever been one photograph and no evidence of temporary speed zone existing. Chambers has told me the sole purpose for the hearing here today was to find out if I was the driver. Um, I've reiterated to him that my purpose of being here today is to um, hear the prosecution's allegations. It's not for me to confirm or deny anything, and he seems to continually be asking me if I was the driver of the vehicle for some reason. I don't get why he's asking me that. Does he want me to make a confession in some fashion? No, or? So, you know, we have differences of opinion as to due process of law and... Yeah, so, and, and I have asked him for many opinions, and I've not really got much back, so. Help me. No. But you can see this is the court. But as I said, if you want to talk to him, then I'm happy to do that. I'll yell out if I need anything. Got, Your Honour. Yes, so 
QID number is different on that certification of first sufficiency as opposed to what's actually written on the deployment register. Different QID numbers. Well, it's being shown to me now. I just want to point out that that is different from what is on the deployment register. Have you received this document before? Uh, yes, I received this on the 11th of October. You can ask questions about it. Okay. Oh, sorry, my apologies. Thank you. 
talk about um, on the right hand side of that document in the stand. Um, the register only, 
in my mind I'd prefer to ask now as opposed to having a break. That's fine, need be. Should it? Is there a reason you didn't sign this document, sir? 
there a reason you didn't find this document? Authenticating it. Well, you authored it, which is why I'm asking if this is actually something you wrote. Because there's no signature I'm asking if this is something you actually remember writing. Yes. Um, you mentioned on here the time, the date, the place, the location, the legislative rules and provisions you're all acting under. Is there any mention of FAN 394 in this brief? Of the vehicle, FAN 394. Is there any mention of the vehicle in this brief of evidence? basically just stating you were there on that day doing that thing, basically. This is just to say you were there. There's no actual evidence that the FAN was there written in this document, that that vehicle was there. You're asking to three questions. Sorry. Sure. Okay, so there's no FAN 394 in this document. No. Photograph was with this. I said photograph I'm um, sorry, no you didn't. This is what I received on the 11th of October. It was a brief of evidence, a speed camera certificate, a certificate of competency, instrument of authorization, certificate of accuracy, and deployment register. The photograph I received on the 6th of June from the Infringement Bureau. I never received a photograph from yourself. One, two, three, four, Five, what the six items? So you see you've listed down here on the bottom of the brief. One copy of certificate of training of Redflex operator. By one copy of certificate of accuracy for Redflex equipment. One copy of my deployment. In other words, I take it that's your deployment register. Um, does it say anything else in there that's been supplied? Okay. So you're saying now that I've... Sorry. So you void, you're saying that Mr. King had already received three other documents? Yes. With, with, his, with, with his first, uh, he would have asked for and got the three. You just disagree with me and say that you sent me a photograph, did you not? I did send you a photograph, Then why isn't it just a brief of evidence? I don't know. I don't well, you, you wrote the... So I'm asking why didn't you write that you sent me a photograph on this brief of evidence? The photograph of the vehicle registration, no, vehicle registration. It doesn't say that you sent me a certificate of the vehicle registration. It says you certificate of training and proficiency. Your Honour, there seems to be confusion here. Um, this is what I received with a staple through it on the 11th. <laughs> Oh, okay. Right. Oh, I get what you're saying, so that's breaching into that sort of point. Right, okay. So...
also like to add here that there's some instrumental authorization, which is basically I take as the instrument that sees the person that checks the equipment, states it's all okay, and they're all authorized to check the equipment. Um, the answer to that in the people we don't see that. You just, uh, this, you're saying you've sent me a photograph, which is a certificate of accuracy, I take as being that. Correct? Okay. On that brief, do you mention that you've supplied this to me, the instrument of authorization? You've supplied me the certificate of accuracy, the competency. Okay, but you haven't actually stated you're supplying me that, have you? That's the certificate of accuracy. Sorry, the authorization. Certificate of authorization. That's what I'm holding. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm just trying to point out the inconsistencies between what he's actually stated on the brief that he's applied and what I actually got. Well, I went through that with Mr. Mm -hmm. Sure. So mm -hmm. that's Mr. King, if you don't mark on the document, the reference to the exhibits that have been. Oh, okay. So then they're talking about the same. Okay. Is the brief of evidence being added as an exhibit? Not yet. Okay. Um, so, so, this, so the certificate of proficiency with the exhibit number one, the instrument of authorization would be exhibit number three. three. Okay. Certificate of accuracy would be two. two. Sorry, makes it easier, doesn't it? Um, deployment register number four. Number four. Photograph number five. And the page one of certificate of particulars from the NZTA. Okay, we'll, we'll move on from the brief. Uh, would that be me giving evidence or? <laughs> sure. Sure, I would like to if I could please. Do you need a, the original copy? We can use the copy. So the uh, three number eight. Okay. Um, you mentioned sorry, Keith. Um, you mentioned on the deployment register your QID number is KS E M seventy one, is that correct? Sorry. sorry, and that's on exhibit. Sorry, you're correct, you're on, it. Yeah, on exhibit four. You've, is that correct? So on the deployment register, which is, oh sorry, that's exhibit four. So on the certificate of competency, which is exhibit number one, your QID number is KSDF21. Why is that? I have a tobacco. Um, my father's and I've got the UK, and um, because I have six months off, when I came back and rejoined, they gave me a new curve, and they couldn't get the new one. Okay, so you have a... Alright. So have you got a certificate of accuracy, sorry Keith, but you have a certificate of accuracy with the KSD or EM71 number on the deployment register. Do you have a certificate of accuracy for that? Um, that's uh, still relevant. Well, it's been produced as, as evidence, so mm -hmm. to me it should have the same number in both documents. Is that not a fair? Please let's talk over each other. Just let him ask the question. Yeah, to, to, to me, for it to be produced as evidence that your QID number is proficient in what's on the Deployment register surely should match what's on the certificate of accuracy, should it not? In a, in a, in a perfect world? Yeah, they do, it doesn't make it, as long as my name is the same and I'm the same person. But it's being as in, into this. Okay. Okay. 
I, I comprehend what you're saying there. So then on your deployment register, is it written your name? Oh yeah, you've got that there. Is your name spelled K-I-E-T-H or K-E-I-T-H? Okay, because there's quite a few misspellings there somewhere I saw. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Cool. Got some notes. Thank you, Your That, that's right. perfectly fine, Your Honour. Thank you. But as it's being as invented as... Last time was that there was no FAM vehicle mentioned in the brief. I think that's about where we were up to last time, is that correct? I never received an NCTA form until the 7th of November, so. Oh, okay. Oh, sure. Well, do you have evidence that was supplied to me then, sir? Do you have evidence that form was supplied to me? Um, sorry, I, I have no record that you have supplied me that form. Um, you stated that there were complaint letters. You stated there were complaint letters from the general public in regards to the concerns of speeding. Oh, who, do, who were they from? The okay. Do you have those letters to show us? Well, surely it would justify the reason for the speed limitation. <laughs> okay. Okay. And how many of the 762 offences? Stop speeding. So, what I'm trying to ascertain is of the 762 um, offences that were issued that day, how many of them did he prevent from speeding? What's the relevance? Well, the relevance is that he was there to reduce speeding. Correct? This is the whole point not to keep speeders down? To a limit? It's to make sure that they are complying with the speed, the speed limit. So, what is the relevance as far as the charge against the That's why we are. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. No. Um, you're stating there was uh, 80 temporary, 80 kilometre hour speed limit, and you, you saw several signs? Yeah, okay. Have you got any evidence of those signs? Or anything from the New Zealand? No, I don't. It's not what I recall. Anything from the Transport Authority or something that would suggest there was a legal site in operation that day of 80 kilometres temporary? I have physical evidence. 
Or if you, I, if you can't produce that, I can't. Okay. Yeah, I see it's now changed to an 80 kilometer or whatever questioning as to whether or not it was a temporary 8 kilometer on that day. Um, and you've produced no evidence to say that there was, other than your own testimony. Um, you state uh, on the Redflex radar equipment, uh, you, you've noted down the tuning fork serial number on your deployment register there, as you're supposed to, according to the uh, operator's module of the speed camera. Um, Which um, Sorry, um, the deployment register, Exhibit 4, um, he's noted the tuning fork serial number. Um, is that serial number supposed to, is, is that tuning fork supposed to be certified as accurate? And so where is the serial number in relation to the certification? Okay, so what, what I'm not quite understanding here is that there's a certificate of accuracy for the, for the model, for the model unit, for the camera itself. Um, what states that the tuning fork is accurate? Okay. All right. So, where's the evidence of the tuning fork test? Is what I'm getting at. So you're certifying the accuracy of the tuning fork. How would you know that? Because it wouldn't start, the system wouldn't start out, but it wouldn't close down. And it also uh, couldn't go on to test the radar, whether that's functioning properly. Okay. So, so if the tuning fork was anything longer than that, it wasn't uh, going to 87, uh, the, the range, air range at 87, the system would start. 87, what do you mean? Tuned for these tunes are 87 k's an hour. Okay. And that's what starts this, you know, if that, that doesn't, if it's dropped and it only goes to 86, the, system, the whole system won't start. So it's that accurate to one kilometre, is it? Yep. Okay. And yet it doesn't say on the recorded speed here 93 to 95, does it? No, because it's the accurate. That, that is, is that a, how accurate is that speed? Is what I'm getting at because the accuracy state. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The certificate. Yeah. The certificate of accuracy states that it's a plus or minus one kilometre. So it would be fair enough to argue then that there was it could have been 93 or it could have been 95. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, so if the tuning fork was plus or minus. Yeah, and you had the threshold set to 91 or higher, is that correct? Okay, so at 91, what would be the minimum ticket? M minimum cost for the ticket? 80. Is there any chance of anybody getting a $30 minimum ticket on that day? No, that's only and uh, sometimes over December, January, Christmas time, there's a lower threshold. And the cost of that price is defined where? The, the, uh, if, for, from my understanding, it's um, up to the first 10 kilometres of an hour, it's a 30k ticket, and then an 80. So there's not giving evidence about the fire, he's not prepared to do that. Oh, I'm sorry, Your Honour, I'm going by the... the um, speed detection operator module that was supplied to me from lawyer to the New Zealand Calibration Unit where it states quite clearly um, that the tuning fork should be certified okay, that the tuning forks must be certified and yet I haven't seen any certificate yeah. stating the tuning forks are certified <laughs> yeah, so Sure. Okay. So 
why I shouldn't be asking that legal question. <laughs> <laughs> How do you activate the tuning forks? How do you activate them? How do you use them? Do you have to hit it hard? So you just as you tap it up against... Okay, yeah, I, I, I get the, the idea of it. But the reason I ask this is because I was also reading the manual that um, if you, the, the latest flat tuning forks as they refer to, you have to be clipped by a finger. So if you're knocking it on someone, there's a chance that you may be knocking that accuracy out of the tuning fork by doing that. So you're just solely going by, if it doesn't pick up 87, the system's not activated. Okay. Did you check the, um, the, the sticker on the underneath of the unit to see if it was in compliance? Up to date? It, the, the expiry date of the camera unit is you're supposed to each time you set it up each day. Did you physically visualise visualize the... And did you do that that day? Yes, I did, I just put the numbers of cameras. I'm not in the same band all the time. I have to check that. So you're... The number of camera, the computer, and the radar, every time I have to look out. Okay, so again, it's simply because it's what's in the manual that I've read as to what the rules and procedures you're supposed to follow, that you should be checking that sticker every day before starting. So if you didn't check it, it's one thing you haven't done. Um, you also state here that, that you aligned it to the first lane or to the straight line. Which, which, sorry, I'll refer to exhibit five here. Which line? Is it the solid line here that you align it to or is it the first line of the lane? It's the first line of the lane. So the first, it's sort it's of... Not the first, not the first line of the lane. Okay, so the... Just that's how we've got the photo of the lane. Could you just study So you can just point to the rectangle or a pen to which line... Well, there's a solid line and then there's um, three lines separated. I'm just asking for someone to point and show us which line you were aligning with. The second line, the first line, is a line that goes diagonally sure. uh, into um, the work area. Okay. And that's why I put it because we were on the same thing. So it's the first solid line that we can see on the first That first solid line, mm -hmm. that second solid line there, is the, is the first, the first line. I'd say that's the, uh, the safety shoulder lane marker or anything. That's the blind road safety shoulder. Well, well, just judging by the photo. Sure. Okay. okay, so you aligned 4.94 metres away from that solid line. Okay. So, how far do you estimate FAN394 was over from where you were parked? How, how far away? I'm, I'm trying to ascertain the angle, or the cosine angle. Now, cos as far as I'm aware, the cosine... Does that not seem like a correct term to you? I'm quoting strictly out of the manual that you should have read. I can't I didn't say it. Okay, but yeah. Okay, so I'm trying to ascertain the coastline angle and as to the accuracy, you say that there's very little difference and if anything it's always on the side of the person that's being targeted that it's always going to be less than what it's supposed to be according to the radar because of the Doppler effect and the angle that's returned back. The angle of a Doppler of the coastline is usually out wider, and you're going to get a less of a reading, a less accurate reading. Okay. Do you, do you operate the, the radar detector? 
So this is a module for operating for radar detector operators. So you're going to adjust the range. No, no, it's all, it's automatically determined by the device as to the angle that comes back to it. So if you're looking at a device that's on the first lane to you, the angle that comes back is very narrow. Shoot out, come straight back, so you're going to get a very accurate speed. But if you're shooting to a car that's three or four lanes over, huh. so if you're shooting to a car that's three or four lanes over, the cosine angle, in other words, the angle from the line that you measured, the straight line, from the angle to where the car is, that angle is greater. So therefore, the accuracy of the radar is less. And they put this. How can that possibly be the same angle? If you go like that, that's still It's not 90. The car wasn't 90 degrees to your device. The car would have been, oh, I don't know, I have a, I have a wild guess at about 45 mm -hmm. degree angle from where you were parked. Well, or should I say like motor vehicle? 15 feet. Sorry, 15 feet. We were <laughs> metric. <laughs> The angle of that thing is going out the same, same way. It doesn't alter. So you can... That thing is going to turn into a large thing. Mm-hmm. And then when it hits the plate and comes back, is it not... I, I guess what I'm trying to state... Please, please, do not talk over each other. It's very difficult. And if you want to copy the transcript, please do not understand how difficult it is for people to talk over each other. So both of you just... Pause before you ask the question or answer. Mm -hmm. So go back and get started. Well, I'm trying to ascertain if the accuracy of the radar is affected by which lane the vehicle is in. From what I've read of this main... Just pause there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, for myself to to accept that it's 94, and I would point out it doesn't say 94 what. Neither does it say next to the number here ICN to refer that that's an ICN number on the on, this on the photo go on the exhibit five. It doesn't say 94 kilometres. It doesn't say 94 miles. 94 three hours per second. It doesn't say anything, does it? So that's sort of left to belief. Now, if that's saying I was doing 94, we'll just presume it's meaning kilometres. In this uh, operator's manual, I'll read you a little piece here. 100 kilometres true speed target radar antenna set to angle target vehicle. If there's zero angle, it's 100%. 100 k is 100 k. At 10 percent angle. 98.4 at 20 angle 93 so there's a difference of seven kilometers there with a 20 percent angle of doppler effect so when it shoots there and it bounces back sorry i didn't finish I was. did you physically see me driving the vehicle that day sure I don't recall saying I wasn't driving anything, Your Honour. So, what is your conclusion of this study? My conclusion is that I think we're trying to split hairs and try and that cloud the issue. Um, and what I said is the actual over five lanes, he was in the third lane. So, I can't see what he's trying to get at. The, the unit was accurate to over five lanes, and uh, I, I can't see anything that. So you don't accept Mr. Pins. Uh, Can I enter the system? Isn't it? Well, it's interesting 
which is, uh, like I say, it's still within which is, it was argued about being 93 or 95. It's not being, I mean, they were thinking 93, it's still 13 days over the limit. Okay, it's at the point that um, you're saying here that irrespective of it being 93, 95, whatever, it's still over 80. Okay, that's what you're basically saying, is that correct? It's still over 80, so still, still in peace. Okay, well, as I'm referring to a manual that you've done 20 hour study in over a two day period. Um, um, we've been talking about the manual, it hasn't been provided to the witness. Would you like me to show you what I'm reading? Sure. Can I approach? Sure. If you'd like to show them, this is page 12 of the DUT 244 Speed Detection Operators Module by the New Zealand Calibration Unit. Just really pointing out this bit here about the Doppler angle, cosine angle. What it states on there. Your, sure. Sorry, are we showing Mr. Stobley or the prosecutor? The prosecutor. She's invited to see. Email it to you if you like. Well, we'll take a couple of minutes break so that can be done. Or can you move on to another topic? Um, yeah, but I, I, I can move on if, if that needs yes, be. Do you need to folder? Um, oh, it doesn't have to be put back in the folder. Oh, but there's 46 pages. No, no, that was really my only oh. question in regards to that. Um, so we've established that you haven't got any evidence to substantiate there was a temporary speeding zone. Um, what was that? No, temporary speed zone, sir. It's not for me to help you, sir. Yes. <laughs> um, so there's no evidence of the temporary speed area. Um, the um, the certificate date you don't recall. You do recall seeing the sticker on the actual unit that day during your tests. Okay. Thank you. Now the um, offences here, you've got listed 762, yet did you not just earlier state that you do a tuning test before and at the end, and therefore there's actually 760 offences, or is there 762 offences? Uh, the first one and the last one, and the numbers, the 1999, 299, are two tests. Okay. Uh, that, that, that the, the whole system is okay, I'm just I'm, I'm questioning the validity of what's written. You've written 762 offences, and yet by your own admission, there's only 760. Okay. 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 
So in the two less to pincers. Cool. So given that each ticket was at least $80, um, 762 over three and a half hours, that's a good $44,000. I'm getting to my point, Your Honour. Um, given that the 762 or $44,000 worth of revenue was gained during that time, um, that's working out to about 20, every 20 seconds another offence was being issued. In that 20 seconds that you may have issued this infringement, did you do any tracking history on the vehicle? Yeah, well, again, I'm going by that manual where it states that you must have a tracking history of 100 metres. Okay. Um, you state you were allowed to deploy it. You were allowed to deploy that day on that site? Yes. Um, is there any evidence of that allowance or permission in there? The validity or the legality of that site being okay to be used that day? There is, um, we carry on on the band, uh, with, uh, and, uh, uh, the transport, and the that we are, um, allowed to park at any of our, um, known sites. Do you have that with you today? Um, the video that we use, uh, and do you have that for evidence here today, from see? Yes. Yes. Yes or no? We that because we can't take it the so you haven't got anything to, to show that you were given that? Okay. So in the photo or exhibit five I'm referring to here now, can you see myself driving the vehicle? Do you have a copa? Would you like to review it? So how do you know that it wasn't the other registered owner driving the vehicle? I know because you haven't that kind of stuff in your declaration. Am I obliged to do that? Uh, Am I obliged to, to sign some statutory declaration after I get a ticket? If you want to How do you mean? I've already had the ticket issued. Yes, and if you want to get a and you want to what, what, by which law? Yeah, of course. Okay. Okay, so you have that law that you're referring to with you that I can review? stating that I have this obligation to sign a statutory declaration as one of the registered owners. Do you have that? No, I've received no copies from the register of anything today, Your Honour. No, have not got it. Okay, so it states the person who at the time of the alleged offence was registered after part 17, which would basically mean the defendant, the registered owner, correct? Um, which one of the registered owners had that obligation? Because it's jointly owned. Sorry, this the, the fee... Are you able to answer that? No, I, I don't send the, 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 the original. You don't send the notice? No, they come from the Bureau of Human Rights. 
I also point out in that menu it states that the operator is the one that must be issuing the infringement notice. Sure, I'll refer back to that soon. Um, so you, you can't say yay or nay or which one of the registered owners was driving, is that correct? So you've got no evidence that I was there. And there's no evidence in your brief that the vehicle was there, although it was. Can you, can you ascertain who the driver of the vehicle was by that photograph? Okay, so how do you know who was the driver? Beyond a reasonable doubt that I was... Yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to ascertain how he's come to the conclusion that I was driving that vehicle that day without evidence. Because he's answered the question as to the legal argument, you can raise later on. He said that the um, notice was sent out to you as a registered owner. If you want to make a legal argument about the length of the hearing, it's very well confused. Thank you. Okay. I'll just quickly review. Do you have any questions about I'm just going to review my, my question as the cheek. You know, go if you just bear me with me for a moment. No personal knowledge that I was there. Um, you notice um, in Exhibit 5 here, you, say, you stated, I believe, before that there were no signs within 200 or 250 metres. Is that correct? That you weren't planted anywhere or no, deployed? No reducing signs within 200 metres. Okay, so um, I, I notice in the picture here, if you go back, um, you can see a slight rope, you can see a road cone in the picture by the medium barrier, which is right next to a sign. What is that sign? It's very hard to make out the sign is there, but you'll see the road cone, you'll see the stand it's on, and you'll see that the partitions of the wall on the other side of the lane is blocked by the square sign being there. It's the back of the sign. So what was that sign? That you weren't parked within 200 metres. Right? That's clearly closer than 200 metres. You misunderstood what I said. Where I was, was 80 kilometres an hour. I can't park within... Another sign that says less than that. Okay. So, and, and the A reducing speed. Went, the 80 went right up to the other side of Rosbank Road. And yet you can't produce evidence to support that, can you? Can you? Yes, or no, Mr. Yes, simple. Thank you. Um, So you send these discs off with 762 offences to Wellington, is that right? And they issued the infringement notices, is that correct? Mm -hmm. That was, was relied back to that module again, whereas the operator is supposed to be the one issuing the infringement offences. Um, so you, so just to clarify, you don't recall seeing him driving the vehicle at all. Okay. Um, so, how many vehicles did you prevent from speeding that day? How many vehicles did you prevent from speeding that day? Sort of purpose for being there, Your Honour. Yeah, I'd say there's probably, what, 15% of the vehicles were offenders out of the 6,044, I think it was. Um, was your window screen tinted at all? Mm -hmm. was, was it tinted, is the question. And does, and does firing the radar through glass affect it in any way? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. It doesn't affect the range at all? Okay. Um, 
state that there were roadworks and areas for trucks to come in and out of around that area. Um, have you got any evidence of that? Well, the, the reason for the temporary 80k speed sign being there is because of work sites and whatnot. Well, like he stated that there were trucks and entrances and out for work sites, so I'm asking to validate whether or not there was an 80k sign legally in operation at that time. Because in the photo I don't see any entrances or exits or work areas anywhere in this photo, Your Honour, which is why I'm asking. Not asked this one that you don't get an answer for, I suppose. Is it possible that the equipment was faulty? No, because I stated that uh, it was a tuned disc, which was positive, so I knew that the system was okay. If the tuned test came back negative, then that would have been the unit that we sent away to be set to find out. Usually, what do two or three tests, and then the third attempt if it fails, you send it away, something like that. It depends what's done. Um, for, well, for instance, sorry, if I could just just stop it there. Sorry, Gary. It depends on the ambient noise that's around uh, and uh, what the radar is seeing. Sometimes we have to get in front of the radar to stop the noise coming through. Are you allowed to operate? Are you allowed to operate the radar detector in heavy rain? Yes. You are. Yes. Does that have any effect on the radar? Was it waiting on the stage? No. There's no cast, there's no rain. Okay. So, but you're you're stated you can operate it in heavy rain. Is that correct? Excuse me, Your Honour, he did state that it wasn't raining that day, but I am asking him if he is, according to his knowledge, allowed to operate that radar to fix it in heavy equipment. Okay, thank you. Um, if you were moving inside the vehicle, would that have any effect? So... Right. So... Just to clarify, you moving inside the vehicle couldn't, in any shape or form, cause an erroneous reading on the radar detector. Okay. Now, just to clarify, well, I notice you guys leave them running all day. Really good for the environment. Um, to your knowledge, um, oh, you've already stated it was correctly calibrated. Is that correct? What are the three stages, or the three things to look for when you're doing it? You're supposed to visually inspect the speed and then go and hear a tone and then confirm it with the radar? Or what's the process of... of Okay, so it's just a light adjustment, no range adjustment, nothing like that. And the aperture would refer to the camera side of things, wouldn't it, not the laser? Okay. Um, you've written FAR in Exhibit 5 here. What does FAR mean on the picture directly next to AU69 a there? Oh, that's a, I haven't written that, so it's If you're only on one lane, you have to be a very good so what is the purpose of distinguishing the difference? It just helps the focus in the air, that's all. It has nothing to do with a Doppler effect or a cosine angle or nothing? Yes. 
that you're not ethically minded so you can't answer that question or that you don't know. You know, this is in relation to the fire word. You're saying that basically fire and near would be in respect to whether the vehicle is in a close lane or the lane closest to the centre meridian. Is that what you mean? No. So there would be five lanes when you're going to be on fire because focusing could be quite a distance away. Okay. But if there's only one lane you're going to be on, and what distance away was I from? Do you have a measure? Do you have a, a have you noted the measurement of how dis the distance between myself? You don't need to. It's not part of the measure. Are you required to mark down the distance that you detected the vehicle speed at? So the answer is no, no, When was your last assessment of your competency? Do you get regularly checked or is it just, sorry, just once in 2013? They checked my phone once and I was still Okay, so they check your camera acuity, but what about your competency in operating the device? Well, um, I've just moved by three, three months ago, I just um, trained three people up to the standard for, for certification to be. Are you a certified instructor? I'm certified, thank you. So, so you, so the last time you had a competency assessment was, and do you have a certificate to, to, to put? Do you have a certificate of, of competency to support that? Oh, I just sort of thought, thought like, for the accuracy, of, it gets tested every 12 months. So. Okay, so it would be more, you wouldn't get it. If you weren't incompetent, they would just say, no, you can't do it anymore. Exactly. Um, who is ATAR87? the issuer of the notice of infringement. No. I have the infringement thing. I'm going by the notice of restrictive infringement events. It says, I think it says on there. So. See any roadworks or construction that day while you're operating? Yes. Um, 
that area that you took the photograph anywhere near the tunnel? Yes. So that's the only pathway. That I guess the point I'm getting at here is um, that road doesn't just solely lead to the tunnel, does it? No. Okay. Was the tunnel open back then? Yeah. Was the tunnel open back then? Honestly, say beyond a reasonable doubt that I was driving that vehicle. I think I've repeated some of my questions in the notes here, Your Honour. I apologise. Trained at all? Yeah. Are you legally trained to interpret legislation? Mm -hmm. To interpret legislation? No. Obviously, you, you write some references in your brief to the legislation. I'm wondering if you actually understand what you're doing, if you have some comprehension of that, what you've written. Okay. And just to confirm, the KSDF21, that was your QID number back then, before you were issued a new one. Is that good? Right. You didn't yourself ascertain the registered owner's details, it was another member of the police, is that correct? Well, they didn't in charge, would that be correct, after a plea to be admitted? Um, so, you've stated earlier what you supplied me, where there is some confusion as to when and what. Um, what generally, if anything other than what you've mentioned, would you supply to anyone questioning or challenging a speeding ticket? As the officer in charge, what is everything that you are aware of that you're supposed to supply the defender? Anything that I'm obliged to supply is the signal of the accuracy of the unit, my mm -hmm. and my certificate of um, competency. Any few things I'm obliged to the same thing. Okay. And, 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 and I don't have to say my capabilities, it's just my help. And I send the photograph and your letter of details and the other certificate with them just so you can correlate everything and uh, your vehicle certificates and the uh, number plate on here is the same. Okay. So it's all solely done by the plate? Yeah. So it's all solely recognised by the plate, by the registration plate? Yes, Oh, I requested a hearing two days after receiving that first ticket, so there wasn't 28 days. Who's responsible for issuing out the infringement notices, the reminder notices, those sorts of things? Anyone in particular? I have never been there. Okay. 
would it be fair to say that it's not left in your hands to issue the infringement or has anything to do with the process prior to a plea being entered? I don't Okay, so the reason I'm asking is because I was referred to ask you for information back in October. So I'm trying to figure out who I'm supposed to be asking for what and who. Why is that? We'd already had one hearing before by that time. Um, at this stage, no further questions, Brian. Oh, we are waiting. Hence, at this stage. Do you want your stuff back? Yeah. That'd be awesome. <laughs> No, if it's only referring to 133 and stuff, I can, I've got copies of that myself. I just didn't have them with me to review. Thank you. Well, in regards to this module, he's just stated that the laser has no effect through glass. In that module it states it is affected by glass, it affects the range. He also has the ability to alter the range. It also states in that manual that him moving inside the vehicle does affect it. It also states that he shouldn't be operating it in heavy rain. All things he's just said the opposite of. So that's a matter of a, a submission. If he's done 20 hours training on that manual, he should know this stuff. Yeah. And he shouldn't be telling me the complete opposite for an answer, should he? Well, that's a, a fairly sort of technical thing. But well, he's certainly... been trained in that module. It shouldn't be a technical question. Well, he should have seen that module and know those answers as I have by reading it. Well, I as well could do. But he's been doing this for five years, mate. He should know that. Yeah. Well, well, uh, what the court is probably going to do you after any re-examination by the prosecutor uh -huh. she will ask a few questions and things like that um, from me no oh, no, yeah. no no she won't get much luck out of that one i'll tell you no, that no, well, but then uh, you've got to make a decision Don't push it with her, but if she simply left the judge know that that is the case for the defence. In other words, you, you've had your lift, you're not getting evidence, mm -hmm. and then the judge will invite you to make any particular submissions that you want to make. Oh, that's so where various I points, and that's where you do it. And then, do I get to read this motion? Do I get to read my motion to her? When is the motion dealt with? You've still got a problem with that. What? Um, and that's the, what the legislation says that. That the all that has disclosure stuff is is not subject to infringement stuff. Now that's a statutory requirement. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you're going to go over that. Well, simple because they keep mentioning. See the report there, section twelve one. Yeah. This is in accordance. So why give it? Why mention that yeah. if it if they have no evidence? Well, that's not evidence. Look, well, it's, it's, it's what they've well, written down, and they I keep telling me it's applicable. So you can't turn around and say that that's not applicable oh, after okay. giving well, the evidence. That's a matter for submission. Um, to uh, judge matters and what have you. you. You can you can tell her anything you want to mm -hmm. in respect of it. She probably is something she she can't deal with. But uh, at the end, why can't she deal with the motion? Well, she's got to she's got to make a finding first. She hasn't got there yet. So the motion is only get heard after the finding. Yes, that's what she told you this morning. Yeah, well, she said that she can't give me. A the, the successful defendant didn't hear any of the evidence, so I mean, I thought we were under the impression she was going to dismiss the case as soon as she saw those emails acknowledging that I'd sent that information. Well, that's what 
you had said yourself last time we left. Well, no, I didn't. You said it looks like she's going to dismiss it. Verbatim is what you said. So there's no argument there. Um, well, it's just, we're just walking out the door. I can't believe it. I, I think she's going to dismiss it. I think it's I what you said. Yep. You don't even say a word. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're mistaken. No, I'm not, but that's all right. The thing to it is, as I said in that email to you, which is trying to be helpful to you. Is something out of the driver is? Not my obligation to. But I'm saying that that is what it's about, that's what the decision will be all about. About? That you're before the courts because there was no response to the... Incorrect. Don't tell me there was no response to them. Oh, well, I sent them a letter. Did you see the letter dated the 8th of May? Oh, yeah. I sent them the well, this is the first one. I got the ticket on the 6th of May. Yeah. 8th of May, I respond, yeah. asking for proof of authority, proof of claim, proof of jurisdiction, and if they can't provide those things to have a court hearing. I requested a hearing. It didn't automatically go to a court yeah. hearing. Okay. okay. So, I'm, not, I'm not angry with you. I just, I'm very, I'm very, I'm very um, passionate when I speak. Don't, don't mistake that for anger. Don't. I've been in the industry long enough to know about all that sort of people. And as I said in my email to you, I do congratulate you on your earnestness and things like that. But the blunt reality of a lot of things, um, it comes down to the fact of whether or not you were the driver. And if you weren't, who were you? Does it not come down to the prosecution proving the case? Oh, yes, the honest pro and die sticks yeah. to them, doesn't yeah, it? Is it my no, job to prove my innocence? No, it never has been. Right, right. Never so been. it's not up to me to yeah. say anything, is it? To say whether I was the driver or someone else was, or well, to make a well, declaration. You just, you just declaration make, is a confession. You just, you just make, uh, you just make whatever submission. Just when, once the prosecutor is finished with any question that she might ask the witness, mm -hmm. you, the judge will let them, she will then say, that is the prosecution case, then judge matters will ask you, um, do you want to, do you want to give evidence or call evidence? Your answer is no, and then she What's the will, difference between calling evidence? Hmm? What's calling evidence? You can call witnesses on your phone. Oh, yeah. It's either you, sure, right? sure, you either sure. call witnesses or you should come, and come along and speak on something else. And then she's the then, um, ask whether or not uh, you've got any submissions and away well, you go. Let rip. Yeah. Then the legal argument has fun, does it? <laughs> I, I wasn't too sure. I get, I get the point about legal argument, but yeah, granted, he's not legally trained, so he can't really have that argument. No. <laughs> That's why I asked him. Most witnesses aren't. He writes all, he writes all that guff down in the brief about lane transport, risk lane transport. What's he writing down? Something he doesn't really understand or comprehend? I think it's a stock sort of an answer. It's a stock there to the guys out there about in the hope that they... Well, he, he's the one that's authoring it. He should know what he's putting down on paper, shouldn't he? Well, I think he probably does a week. He's certainly not legally trained. Certainly not very clear on many things. But we'll show that in the manual. Ah, oh, fun and games. Woohoo! Oh, yes.
so if you're going head to head, then there's no angle. If you're going there over to five lanes, then that angle's greater. At 40 degrees angle, instead of 100, it's reading 76. So it's only 75% accurate at that range and at that angle, isn't it? No, hmm? I you agree there? Doesn't really make them a very accurate thing, does it? But then, but then the people that pay are told, oh, well, it's better for you because it's better for you. It means you've, you've done less speed. The whole thing's a scam to begin with. Eighty-six million dollars this year. That's what they're hoping we get. Well, I'm sure you will. It helps pay for the amicus. Correct any of it. serial number of that tuning port is accurate anywhere. Uh, is it? motion that hasn't even been read and it's been in the court's well, hands for a month. I see what you're saying, but no, I, 
I don't want to come back another day, to be quite honest. I'm going to get this over and done with now. I mean, it's costing me 226 every year. It's costing it? Well, it's costing it. Well, the taxpayers are welcome to pay without the obligation to do so. They can go right ahead. They don't need to complain about it. Taxation is theft. In case you haven't noticed. Don't you? Really? Of course you are. You're on the good side of it. Why wouldn't you be? Well, I don't think you'd be doing well for 50 years. Keep right then. So you have got some bad. That's why I've paid for this. Exactly. We all are. Aren't we? No, no, we've been through that one before. Um, yeah, that bit. As you'll notice, the operator must. So why is it getting sent to Wellington initially? The operator must record the details on route, identify the events, check the infringement, record the appropriate precedent. And there's another point there where he's supposed to record the distance that it was detected from, which apparently he doesn't care about. Completes all part of the notice. Yeah. Bulk centre. Yeah. It's not dealt with on the case by case. That's ridiculous. Well, didn't stop one person of those 760 people from speeding. All he did was collect revenue. Yeah. No, it isn't. It isn't, because if you want to stop someone from speeding, stop them from speeding. Don't take their money and then they'll race to get another ticket, won't they? No. That's why they have cameras. It makes a lot more money this way than having a cop pull someone on the side of the road. I'm very familiar with this area. Are you? You should read this. Well, you want to familiar, right? regards to the module. Yes. Um, be with me while I find these here. Um, this is sure. No yeah, sorry about that. I did actually have each the coffee so I put it in my mind. Um, Mr. Stubbley has stated that uh, weather conditions, heavy rain, he's still allowed to use it. I would refer you to page 21 under weather conditions. Weather conditions are important considering the operation of the, of the traffic. Sorry, that's later. I'm be looking at the radar. Yes. Key information in regards to the range control should be adjusted to suit the operational conditions, and you, you stated you couldn't adjust the range of it. Today, it's, the, it's 2001, it says it at the bottom of the page, the looking corner. It's not referring to any particular camera, it's referring to radar and laser operating. It doesn't refer to any particular type of. This manual doesn't specify any particular type of camera to be used. All it does is identify and distinguish between laser and radar. There are two separate parts and that's that. It's not a matter of what camera it's meant for. There are different manuals for the different cameras, I'm sure. This is to do with the operating manual. So and the 
Radar has changed in its op in its radar detection. Radar has changed. Okay, and this model doesn't distinguish between one camera from another. Sorry, but this doesn't. under the same petrol, just as the radar is still being used to detect, irrespective of what camera the radar has been shot from. Still the same thing, hence laser or radar. The other two types of de detections, correct? In fact, I think in 2009 they were still actually filming. How's it, how radars are digital and go on the desk that they were filmed at them. So, Okay. Have you? Well, I was going by this manual where it quite clearly states the Doppler tones, how to operate a radar detection device. It doesn't state what type of radar detection device, and I would have thought that the general relevance of radar detection devices is all the same as opposed to cosine angles and so I'll just finish off with the question so therefore this manual would still easily tell anyone how to operate a radar detection device is that correct no Okay, well we're not dealing with handheld or static, we're dealing with the one in your van, which was a red flex radar, is that correct? It's an Okay. Well, I can't go by, I can only go by what I have, so um, it is my understanding that it cannot be operated in heavy rain because the rain reflects the radar back as opposed to you... It, Radar is either absorbed um, or reflected. So, yeah. Uh, sorry, the, the relevance I brought that up is because the previous question I asked the witness was, can it be operated in heavy rain? And he blatantly, easily said yes. Now I'm going by a manual that says it's not to be operated in heavy rain. So there's my comment. referring to the camera side of it as opposed to the laser side of it, the measuring side of the device versus the actual capturing of the photo. Whether or not 
the cameras have been updated, whether they're film or digital, there is no bearance whatsoever on how the radar is sent and received from the unit. You want to idea as to why in this manual it would state that it's not to be used in every room? Because of the reflection of the rain, not because of the photographs, Your Honour. Um, I don't think this does not refer to wet power. The module doesn't refer to film, any type of film, digital, it refers to the laser and radar detection. Okay. Um, uh, the one other thing that we were speaking of in regards to this module, which I'm sure is similar to the 2009 one, which will be the, um, the cosine angle that I was bringing up before. Um, Granted, this may not be relevant to the unit you were using, but I will refer you to page 12. And it's got this table here stating 100 kilometres true speed of target, radar antenna set to target vehicle at a zero angle, in other words, the radar's been shot straight ahead and then come straight back. There's no difference in speed, it's still 100 at 100 kts. But when you're doing 10, it's 98 kilometres comes back. At 20 degrees of angle, it's at 93, and down to 40 degrees of angle at 76, which means that the accuracy is down to 75%, or well, just under 75% accuracy as to the true speed from that measurement. Given that the photo um, exhibit 5 shows that the vehicle was three lanes over, then the angle from where my car was to um, the straight line or the cosine angle would have been quite great. About, I would estimate between 40 to 45 degrees. Would you agree to that? It'll only be picked up as 93. It could have been higher. Yeah, it, that's what I'm saying. It could have detected the vehicle it's doing. Yes. I'm talking about the accuracy of the device. And it's, it's down to 75% accuracy, which doesn't to me fall beyond reasonable doubt that I was doing 94. I hadn't finished it. The vehicle could have been. say technician's module here, it says operator's module, which is what I'm going by. And as I said, I have no idea what the 
I can't alter that cosine. I would believe the cosine angle would be altered depending on where the vehicle is that it's detected. Whether the vehicle is in the closest lane, then that cosine angle is less. If the vehicle's on the third lane, then that cosine angle is greater. And you can see by the depiction in the picture but as to what it's referring to. That yeah, that angle. The same if you can see where that line is on that vehicle, you can see how it's got the little measurement of 20 degrees on that angle on that little picture there. Okay, That's the angle that's varying between 0 to 40 in that little table. So saying that that stays the same is not quite correct, is it? Because that angle would depend on where, which lane the vehicle's in, which means that that cosine angle would be greater or less from where the radar detection is. Or are you saying it's the same cosine angle irrespective of which lane the vehicle's in, that cosine angle is still going to be 10 degrees irrespective? Yes. So is that, so the camera turns? Well, okay. he said yes, I was just starting with my next question. Okay. Uh -huh. Sure. So you're saying that when it gets to here, is that right angle? I'm saying depending on which lane the vehicle is in. Lane 1, lane 2, lane 3. Lane 1, 20 degrees cosine angle. Lane 2, 30 degrees cosine angle. Lane 3, 40 degrees because the car is further to the left or right of where the detection device is. And the cosine angle is measured from the distance of the radar to out to a 90 degree angle to where the vehicle is and then over. And then that's your, say, 50 metres to that. And then over to that side you've still got your same cosine angle is greater. The point being is the accuracy of the device is lesser the greater the cosine effect. Which means that it is not beyond a reasonable doubt. This is the no point so, at no point in that ditch, in that picture does it show you a right angle or a 90 degrees. It is showing you the difference between the detection of the device to the radar, and then if I'm looking straight at you, and then if I point the radar and it detects Judge Mathers, well this angle is greater. This is more 40 degrees as opposed to 0 degrees looking straight at you and getting the signal straight back. When it shoots and it reflects off, say, Judge Mathers, which is at, say, 40 degrees, then that cosine angle is greater, but the accuracy is less. And granted that they favour the target of the vehicle that it's always going to be less, but my point is the fact that it is not as accurate. And if accuracy, or beyond reasonable doubt, should be established, surely there should be some level of accuracy. Not at all. Well, that picture, I was showing that, that's an angle, and that's 20 degrees. That's 45 degree angle, whatever it is. And when they're straight out like that, that's 90 degrees. You seem to keep coming back to this 90 degrees thing. Well, I think you're because I have to agree to, to disagree. disagree. Because you're opposed to disagree. Yes. So can I just ask you one question? The fact that the vehicle with registration number um, FAN 394 is shown in the lane shown on exhibit 5, does the accuracy of the recording device is that effective because it's in that lane as opposed to being in the first lane? No, the specific accuracy is over. They've they tested over five lanes and there's a 1k, a 1K difference at, at, at any speed. So Plus or minus? Plus or minus. Thank you. Um, at this stage, no further questions, Your Honour. Um, well, going by the fact that we have differences in manuals that we're referring to, um, it would be pretty pointless to continue. I did have some arguments in regards to that, but if we're not going to go by the same thing, then, and 
he has stated he's not very technically minded, so we'll leave it at that. Thank you. 
Can I just bring up a, 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 a result of what the prosecution has just re-examined them about? No, uh, For the tuning fork, the, there's no certificate showing the accuracy of the tuning fork, is there? Okay. And um, the Gazette? The, where he stated he'd heard from his superior that it had been gazetted. So that's third-hand information that he was aware that it had been gazetted? Okay, thank you. for the relevance yes please um, I would point out that that tuning there's no mention of that tuning fork serial number anywhere in a certificate of accuracy it does state the yeah, yeah, legal argument so. <laughs> talking to in regards to the motion for dismissal. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Well, there's 20 points on this. How many more faults do I need to find? <laughs> if, if I was <laughs> I suggesting we come back for another day, Your Honour. I'm done with you on a straight on for 10 months. <laughs> the provisions we're missing last November. So at the at the end of the day, um this presumption that I'm supposed to be the driver and yet there's a presumption that I'm innocent as well. So how do those two presumptions cross each other? Hmm? I'm, I'm, I'm confused there. <laughs> no thanks, Your Honour. You're meaning any points she brings up I've got to respond to? And all the matters that you want to bring up. Thank you. So you, you've already found a document. I'm, I'm going to ignore that. With the motion for dismissal? Yes, because I want you to re it. I'll, re I'll resubmit it in an addendum form, sure. So, so you're saying that 
that you... Sure, the shooting forks not mentioned in the yet. Sure, it would be good to have a copy of that 2009 manual to look through, Your Honour. Hmm. I, I actually, I'd been corresponding with the Imprintment Bureau and they had told me that this manual had been superseded um, and told me that to see the attached document and there's no attachment, so I've got nothing to refer to, so... <laughs> <laughs> no. Mm, that's good to refer. the new submissions I should get to the court before showing up next time or? Yes, yes, that third date you mentioned, the response from the yeah. prosecutor? Yeah. Yeah. April. Thank you, Your I would point out 26th of April is over the one year period that this matter should be dealt with. It was initially 22nd of April. Oh, I thought it had to be finished and dealt with for 12 months. Let's read that one. Sorry, that's not Thank you. Oh, I'll send them to everyone. Yep. Mike's got it. Go on. It's in the transcript for the last, last one here. Mark, commonly known as Mark of the House of King. Correct. Sure. I'm very good at filling him in, don't you worry. <laughs> I've printed out about 3,000 pieces of paper. I found that somewhat difficult, Your Honour. Um, I, I've put in questions and uh, to the registry since the 16th of November. I've asked for evidence of filings. I have had no response from them. They've, they've asked me to clarify what I want. Please ask your email to Oh, this, this was in regards to filings to find out when. If, if I don't get response via email, should I just come in and see them face to face then? Because if I don't get a response via email, well I have, I have, and um, they suggested I contact Mr Chambers, um, and I, I did all of that, and I still got no response in regards to my questions or clarifications from the court. 
so. <laughs> I'm first near and with me now. I'm on my way around this. Alright, I think it's probably best to say, thank you very much. Yeah, if not, I will. <laughs> I'm more than happy to come in and question anybody. Thank you, very much. Thank you, Your Honour. I hope you had a good Christmas too, Your Honour. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Alright. Alright. Oh, hey, hey. Alright, well, well we fantastic stuff. Hopefully quicker than the registry can be, huh? I'll tell you, they uh, they asked me to clarify exactly what I want. I put it all down and I still get no answer from them, so I'll tell you. That personally is very disappointing Well I have a right to these documents and I'm not getting supplied them. And if the registry chooses to continue these more, I have no problem coming in and putting them on blast all over YouTube for not providing this well, job. Good as gold. Thanks, Rosh.